that for the slides because it's not public yet. I will make it public after uh, this talk so that you ha I have your full attention. I'm Sakib Sheikh. I lost my sight when I was seven. And shortly after that, I went to a school for the blind. And that's where I was introduced to talking computers. And that really opened up a whole new world of opportunities. I joined Microsoft 10 years ago as a software engineer. I love making things which improve people's lives. And one of the things I've always dreamt of since I was at university was this idea of something that could tell you at any moment what's going on around you. I think it's a man jumping in the air doing a trick on a skateboard. I teamed up with like-minded engineers to make an app which lets you know who and what is around you. It's based on top of the Microsoft Intelligence APIs, which makes it so much easier to make this kind of thing. The app runs on smartphones, but also on the pivot head smart glasses. When you're talking to a bigger group, sometimes you can talk and talk and there's no response and you think, is everyone listening really well? Or are they half asleep? And you never know. I see two faces, 40 year old man with a beard looking surprised. 20-year-old woman looking happy. The app can describe the general age and gender of the people around me and what their emotions are, which is incredible. One of the things that's most useful about the app is the ability to read out text. Hello, good afternoon. Here's your menu. Great, thank you. I can use the app on my phone to take a picture of the menu and it's going to guide me on how to take that correct photo. Move camera to the bottom right and away from the document. And then it'll recognize the text. Read me the headings. I see appetizers, salads, paninis, pizzas, pastas. Hi. Years ago, this was science fiction. I never thought it would be something that you could actually do. But artificial intelligence is improving at an ever faster rate. And I'm really excited to see where we can take this. Hey. As engineers, we're always standing on the shoulders of giants building on top of what went before. And in this case, we've taken years of research from Microsoft Research to pull this off. I think it's a young girl throwing an orange frisbee in the park. For me, it's about taking that far off dream and building it one step at a time. I think this is just the beginning. <laughs> okay. Hi everyone, <laughs> just wanted to start you with this uh, amazing video to get in the mindset of what we can do with mixed reality to make a, a difference. My name is Aisha Gül, I worked uh, for Microsoft as a Azure Cloud Developer Advocate. I'm also a Google Developer Expert for Web Technologies and you can find me on Twitter, AYS something, because my name has a very hard spelling. And this is what I do usually for work, uh, just play around with nice tools and uh, ignore my coworkers, and it's a great way to spend your days. But of course, mixed reality is not just for running away from your reality. There's really um, great use cases. Uh, there are serious people who are using it, uh, and one of the great use cases is when you you do not have access to your hand maybe or you you are busy doing something else and when we think about accessibility uh, we don't just think about the people who are absolutely blind but in uh, some cases for work purposes people might also need to um, not use their hands and um, part of accessibility is the knowledge and in a way, mixed reality uh, allows us to make any kind of information available to anyone. So imagine you start working in a new place, especially if you, uh, it's a skilled uh, work that you have to learn about the machines and how to deal with it in your environment. Mixed reality allows you to get on board really fast and transfer that knowledge to the newcomers really fast. 
And of course, not just HoloLens or like headsets, we have uh, great applications today on mobile phones. And one of my favorites is um, Google Maps. I think they did a really uh, good job with the UI, where you could see that little tiny dots that's pointing you towards the direction, and then you can see where you need to go. Uh, how many of you use the Google Maps? AR? AR stuff? No? Oh no, try it out, it's really cool. So information is important and having access to the information is very important. Uh, if, when we have a lot of information, we have tons of sensor data, tons of uh, information about everything that's coming from our surrounding and we have to make uh, really fast decisions. This is where mixed reality shines because it's contextual data in the right time and the right place. So how do we get started? You already uh, heard about uh, it in the previous talk, but just wanted to say um, it's not available on all, in all of the browsers. And you can, in, in any time, you can um, search for can I use and then go to the WebXR APIs and um, check it out. So Chrome is uh, doing pretty well. Um, Samsung is doing pretty well, <laughs> obviously. and. Um, but uh, it's a challenge. So what do we do if it's not available? What can we do now? Uh, one thing you can do is uh, start using the flags. You can go to uh, Chrome Canary and then type Chrome flags and uh, enable some of the experimental flags. But let's say I did that. That's good for me, but how about my users? Uh, am I going to give them tutorials to turn on those flags? And that's not a very good user experience. Um, for that, there are a few options. Uh, one of them is origin trials. Um, for Chrome, six to seven and later, um, you can sign up to be one of the uh, few, you know, few people who are in the origin trial and you get a token. Whenever somebody comes to your site, um, that token allows uh, Chrome to enable those flags automatically. So they don't have to go, they don't have to know anything. Uh, it's under the hood, it, it's being turned on. And um, there are some other browsers, Firefox uh, Reality is uh, one of them, it's really cool. But um, also there's these open source uh, XR poly fields that you can use today to uh, make sure that it works in any of the browsers. So making your application progressive is a part of being very inclusive as well. Not everybody um, will have the same capabilities in their phone and the phones are expensive. Um, and whenever you have a chance, you, uh, it's a great idea to make the same experience available in different platforms. So if I have a VR device, I should be able to um, totally get immersed in the same experience as well as um, someone who doesn't have any of it can see the same thing in 3D. And there's a great article uh, about it and you can find it in the links when you go to the slides. So everything you saw in um, the video that we saw um, is created by some of the AI capabilities of the Azure services. And um, these are really, really important because it's not just for people who have any uh, vision or um, hearing disabilities, but um, anytime you have a problem hearing something, you're in a very crowded environment, then you have a kind of a hearing disability. Whenever your hands are full, um, it's almost as if you don't have the hands, right? And you still want to be able to interact with your applications. And using speech services, um, this is, um, you can turn text into speech, speech into text, and also uh, understand language uh, and intent. Um, and you don't really have to know a lot about um, AI or how these things work. Um, there are so many great tools that we built and Louis 
Lewis.ai is one of them. And Lewis is a language under, understanding, and this helps, this tool shows us how we can create um, some understandable comments that we can interact with our applications. So in the case of medical use case, for example, uh, what a doctor would say um, to your application won't be the same as what I would say. So um, what Lewis gives you is very um, common use cases, for example, um, training your, well, training data for creating some events in your calendar. Um, and what you can do is build on top of it. For example, here you can take a look at the uh, add session or calendar accept event entry. So if you click on that, uh, you, you see all of the training data that we put already. So we have different way of saying the same thing. Let's create a, a event. Uh, can I add a um, appointment? And we can define these uh, key phrases and keywords. And um, the cool thing is you can see how this works through this Lewis AI, and then you can add new stuff to it. And if you have specific words, then you can totally start from scratch and uh, teach your application your specific language. Search is another cool uh, service. So um, you might be able to detect, detect some information, but uh, there's much more to be found um, in outside world. For example, if you're in a museum and you're um, going through an exhibition, there's so much more information that you can get about that painting. And um, this is being done by the search services. And a great example of this is in the Metropolitan Museum. If you go there, you can uh, take a look. Um, any artwork that you see, you get a lot of information about the period that they're in and similar artworks uh, through the search. Vision is, I think, <laughs> uh, the most interesting, especially in terms of mixed reality because with uh, vision, we are able to uh, detect objects around us and um, let learn about our environment. So this Hello is- Hello there. In this video, we're gonna show a quick uh, demonstration of utilizing- This is one of the uh, applications that one of our friends built uh, using some IoT devices and you can see him walking around in his house and it's able to render, it's able to detect objects. And as you can see, it's detecting everything in the environment. And also, if you notice, there are some numbers going all around him. What's happening is uh, the stream of his vision is uh, being transferred into the API and you are getting a prediction percentage. So it looks like a dog, but uh, we also tell you how sure we are. And it works uh, on real objects as well as the um, holograms, the little bodies that you saw right, right here. These are holograms, so it works exactly the same way. But as you can imagine, it's really, really hard to uh, do this very efficiently. Um, you are running an AI model in your left, in your uh, device, and also maybe you are making some calls to some APIs, but that's a lot of calls to make. There's a lot of frames to render at the same time. And um, in the case of that example, he is using an external IoT device to uh, run the model, so it doesn't have to make all of the calls. And one way we also make it available for HoloLens is we have a smaller version, limited version of the AI models that are running in HoloLens devices. 
and it allows us to predict um, what you will going to do or where your attention is going, which direction you're gonna uh, go. The other really cool thing is we also learn about the specific user. Uh, for example, when you first get the HoloLens, what you do is uh, calibrate to your eyes. And while you're doing that, you notice um, you are actually moving so much, although you think that you're very straight and uh, you're looking straight away, but your head is actually moving all the time. Um, and these little things are brain adjust, but when you are wearing a device, it's, there's no adjustment, then everything keeps moving. So <clears throat> when you first wear the device, we calibrate it to your eyes, so we calculate the distance of your eyes and have a model of your eyes. Um, but also we learn from your shakiness and then over time it is a much smoother experience. You can imagine if you have a disease that is making it really hard for you to wear a device like that, uh, AI can be very um, helpful. So, <clears throat> uh, part of our vision APIs, we have uh, multiple other little services. Uh, one of the really cool ones is the ink recognizer. Uh, what it does is it can read handwriting. And this is a really cool thing, not only if you're visually impaired, but also like you, you, somebody typed it somewhere but, and you don't want to type it in your phone or in your device over and over. Um, you can recognize the text and then um, make it available for the user to click and um, navigate. It also works for shapes as well. And I think it's really cool. So a every one of us can be much better at drawing. Um, it is cool to uh, recognize all of the objects uh, with the models that we train, but sometimes you have a very specific use case that you want to, um, you want to do. And for that, we have uh, this service called Custom Vision which allows you to train uh, your own data to uh, learn about your environment. For example, if you have, if, if you're doing an application for a museum and you want to be able to uh, differentiate between two different um, paintings or a painter and automatically being uh, captured, then you can train your model to recognize uh, different painters. Um, custom vision today. What you do is um, upload lots of pictures. For example, this is detecting um, if it's a hammer or a drill. So you load uh, a lot of pictures of hammers and drills. And what you do is um, you tag each image as hammer and um, or a drill. And also, um, it is asking you to create, you know, get really close to the thing and uh, create a rectangle around it. And once you do that, you can uh, quickly train it. And then uh, once it's trained, you can start testing it. So this first one is a test and it's an example of negative as well. And over time, you can do this training, um, you can test it in many different ways, and then you can ke keep adding to your model to make it more accurate. Any questions so far? Okay. So Face API is the one that was on the video to recognize if everybody is listening, so uh, we can do the same thing here as well. Um, you can try the face API, and it's one of the most um, common ones. But what it does is recognize the face, so it doesn't recognize a person, but you can also train it to recognize a specific person. And it's trained to recognize um, um, famous people, basically. What you get from this data, from uh, uploading an image, is um, 
you know, some of the attributes of the per person, is their hair, is it bald, and the hair color, um, and the head pose, gender, age, facial hair, glasses, makeup, and emotion. Emotion is the um, important one, I guess. Uh, with all of these, you also get a prediction um, percentage as well. So we have the confidence level of uh, between zero and one, one being the most um, confident and zero being negative, basically. Um, we can train our models to uh, recognize forms, so we can uh, recognize the inputs and outputs and define different uh, sections and easily digitalize anything that we have. Let's say you have a lot of um, receipts and you can train your models to uh, recognize uh, the items and the prices in the text. Um, can you guess what this was used in the first video? Menu, yes, uh, great. So in the menu, if you remember, there was um, different sections and this was able to recognize the different sections and um, that makes it much easier for the person to hear about it. Since it's a more um, structured uh, kind of data, it doesn't take that many images to train um, your model as well. So all you need to do is uh, give few different versions of the same form and then uh, train your data. And what you will get is a JSON um, with all of the information. Uh, let's see if this works. Okay, and we have uh, the video indexer, which uh, means that it will work also on video streams. And uh, what it does is it uh, recognizes the people, content uh, in it, and if you also match it with uh, maybe sentiment analysis, there's just um, a lot of information you can get from the stream, uh, video stream. Any questions so far? Yes. Um, is there anything that could be for, uh, if I wanted to do like a graphic card tree and just like find the sources would be essential? Uh, that is true. Well, not all of them actually. So you are able to run it in a container in your own network. And if your device is, you know, that capable of running the container inside, so the models can run. So. Uh, when we are running the models in HoloLens, for example, it's a smaller version, a lighter version of the same models. Yeah. Yeah, offline is very important. It's uh, also part of the inclusion and accessibility. I think we should, I mean, living in San Francisco, it's really easy for us to forget, but um, uh, most of the applications that I see, like even Facebook and Netflix, when I go to another country which doesn't have that good connectivity, you started to see all of the bugs. So it's a really good idea to uh, try test it with, you know, lower, um, what is the word for it? Um, yeah, low Wi-Fi connectivity and also uh, offline. Um, there are a couple of libraries that I, uh, I mean, that are available today that we can use. You know, Babylon JS is one of them, um, and it has great documentation. Um, it's, it has really nice examples as well. If you go to their uh, website, there's examples, and also there's a playground as well, so you can um, try out the code without having to. Um, 
create a project in your local environment. And cool thing is you can also download the examples once you play with them. Okay. So on the editor on the left side, there's TypeScript or JavaScript um, options as well. Uh, you can start changing things and um, once you like, like it, you have this download option. Three JS has been the most popular, I believe. Uh, would you agree? Um, so Three JS is uh, also an open source project. Babylon JS is open source as well, and it has a great community behind it and um, great examples. They, if you go to their example sites, also you have the chance of going through through the code. So it directly takes you to the code sample on the GitHub. And ARJS is, um, is a library specifically um, for augmented reality. Um, and 3JS had some AR um, support, but since the APIs change very rapidly all the time, it's um, not being maintained very well, unfortunately. So I have a few examples for you. Um, one of them is uh, with Angular. How many people used Angular before? Uh, two, three, four, <laughs> yes. Not very popular, I see. Um, the, well, I, I just had that uh, to, as an example, you can also look at uh, other repos on my GitHub, which I have links as well. Hmm. Okay, let's see. You can ignore the Angular part, but what you need is a canvas element to uh, get started, initiate the AR. And um, the other very important thing is, since the APIs are changing very rapidly, it's a really good idea to um, abstract it out into a different service in your code base, uh, so that when things change, when everything else breaks, you can just go into one place to change it. Um, all right. This is the AYAR repo. Uh, there's a link on GitHub. Let's see. Uh, what it does is it uh, reads a, a he hero image um, and it's trained to uh, see this image and you can attach uh, any kind of information to that uh, QR code. So uh, one thing that's really uh, exciting that's happening uh, is spatial anchors. Have you guys heard about spatial anchors? Um, yes, so it's a way of, it, you can think of it as GPS, but uh, in anywhere that GPS doesn't work, uh, but it's also much more accurate. So with spatial anchors, you are able to recognize surfaces and um, in your environment, uh, once you have that, you're able to add uh, any 3D object or any other kind of information in a particular place and um, also persist it. Um, it is not uh, working great on, um, on web, web pages so far, but um, it is available on um, the Android and iOS devices. 
So you can imagine if you, if a blind person or anybody actually who is having really hard time moving around, go into a space and not knowing where, where they can go for the bathroom or like which room. It's very easy for, for anyone who doesn't have any issues to walk around and try to find it, but if you have a problem, it's really stressing. And one of us uh, have a really cool application for it. Uh, and do you wanna tell us about it real quick? Hello, there we go. Yes. Um, what, one of the, the ways you can use this type of, of um, AI is we, we made it uh, uh, over at Berkeley um, augmented reality for visually impaired people where we set up a HoloLens to um, basically use both the, the environmental mapping as well as image recognition, text recognition to be able to um, basically for people who are, are visually impaired or blind uh, help them identify surfaces where um, text might be written on uh, or just other surfaces that might be relevant like you know bus stop signs for example um, and then read the text on it out loud and place that text in the environment so that you know if we've got bus stop 52 over here and bus stop 80 over here it'll read that and have the sound come from where that text actually is in order that they can distinguish one's text source from another. Um, so I, I think definitely one of our, our goals is to, to implement a lot more advanced machine vision uh, into that. And I think some of, uh, some of these APIs that, that Isaac will just, just laid out there are really uh, some, some great targets for us. Thank you. So it is really also a um, compute heavy process, right? Being able to detect everything in your surrounding and then add information to it so anyone can see it. But using uh, spatial anchors, you can add uh, any kind of information ahead of time. Uh, one of the issues that uh, people commonly run into is also having too much to detect. And um, if you are detecting everything, then it's very noisy and it's hard to deal with. But um, if we had the capability to add the anchors um, in specific places and let, guide people through a corridor to go to a restroom is um, so much more helpful. Unfortunately, it's not ready yet, but it will be. So it's a really good thing to keep in mind. And you can add audio or any other kind of information. Let's see. So to run the application, uh, you, you can download it or clone it from GitHub. And um, if you look into the package.json, I have some scripts for you. And if you start, run the start script, which is npm run start, um, then your application starts serving at localhost 4200. Um, being able to <laughs> debug it is not um, that intuitive, I feel like. Um, so what I have here is a Chrome Canary, which has the flags uh, turned on. So I just turned on the survey uh, flag too, and I regret it right now. <laughs> If you type Chrome flags and then uh, search for XR, uh, I have the device, uh, APIs, device, XR, and AR, and hit test and anchors, all of them enabled. Once you do that, you also have to uh, relaunch um, your browser. To, I'm sure somebody else <laughs> talked about it, but to be able to debug it on your phone, you have to turn on the developer options and once you do that, uh, normally Chrome doesn't have the remote devices automatically, but uh, command option J uh, opens up the developer tools. And if you go on to the, um, is it um, more tools? Should be, some, oh, okay, more tools. 
uh, it's the hamburger menu, more tools and remote devices. Then um, you can connect your phone and the cool thing is you uh, can open up uh, a, any kind of URL in that um, on your phone and inspect it here. Okay, so one of the things that you have to do is also add the um, ports that you will display in ahead of time. So I have all of these ports set beforehand. Now I can uh, go to any of the uh, examples and um, say inspect and it will open up on my phone as well. Yeah. Okay. All right, it's not rendering for some reason. I'll show you another one. So I, ha I have this um, live server on uh, 5500, port 5500, and uh, I can open that up on this one. And on, on my phone, device is not found, but I can run the same thing on my um, device from here. And you can enter the URL. Anyone seeing what I'm not seeing? Uh -uh. All right, demo gods are not with me. <laughs> hmm. Oh. You think? Wi-Fi seems to be okay. Um, oh well, sorry about that, but um, you can give it a try and then I will be around uh, later on and um, if you have the same issues, maybe we can debug it together. All right. On my slides, I have uh, tons of resources for you, like how you can use the uh, AI services uh, with mixed reality, and there's a, a ton of um, sample applications on these links. And um, please give it a try and let me know um, if you are having any issues or if you build something cool, please do share. And finally, the um, slides will be available at bit bit.ly WebXR 2019. Thank you. <laughs>